Welcome to Mzansi Ostai. My name is Connie. If you're new here, you're very much welcome. So after about 42 kids dead and about more than a month later, we finally hear from South African President Cyril Ramaphosa. So you would think that, yeah, Cyril is going to provide something better, you know. Maybe he was sitting at his um, office drafting a very important legislation that is going to finally end this poisoning of South African children mainly in the township, mainly in the black community where there's low income community where it's far away from the city center and spaza shops are the lifeline of this community. So you think that here yeah, after 42 kids dead, six weeks later, this president is going to come up and address the nation and really talk about something very important and very rainy legislation. So, yeah, I haven't listened this, to this video. This is the first time I'll be listening to it. Um, I have actually looked at other people commenting on this video on his address. So I said, well, you know what, I will just have a time, spend some time and listen to it and make some comment about it. All right, so I already have a biases about him. So, you know, I, I feel like he's a DI higher president. I don't think he's a very competent president. I think Cyril Amaposa is a president, the worst president in a democratic South Africa. So that's my view. So I just wanted to Dress, express my biases before I give this comment and listen to him. But anyway, we're going to listen to him and give him a chance, like anyone else. You gotta listen to them, give them respect. So let's listen, all of us. On a matter that has deeply sad, on a matter that has deeply saddened and distressed many people in our nation. Across the country, there's been a rise in reported cases of foodborne illnesses and deaths. Uh, not, not foodborne illnesses, it's been poisoning, chemical poisoning to be exact. But anyway, let's listen. A number of becoming people. severely ill and even dying after eating contaminated food it has been found that some as if you're caring it's now how many weeks now six weeks since the kids have died okay four weeks and this is the first time we're going to address the nation some of the food items would have been purchased from spaza shops and street vendors since the beginning of September in 2024, there's been a total of 890 reported incidents of foodborne illnesses across all our provinces. Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal have been the most affected, with Limpopo, Free State and Pumalanga also recording dozens of incidents. Over the last few weeks alone, these foodborne illnesses have claimed the lives of at least 22 of our nation's children. Last month, there was a major food, foodborne incident in a lady in Soweto, in which six children died. The youngest of these children was just six years old. Few words can adequately convey our sadness and our pain as a nation. 
our thoughts and prayers are with their families as they go through the pain and the anguish of losing their children. Yeah, the thought and prayers is for the priest, is for the, you know, the family when they're getting counsel. We don't want to hear the thoughts and prayers from the president. Do we want to hear thoughts and prayers from your president or do you want to know the policy and action? All right, so I'm just getting a little bit annoyed. Oh my God, this video is about 4, 24 minutes. I'm going to have to, this is going to be torture for me to listen to this. But anyway, let me just listen. Losing a child is something that no parent should ever have to go through and endure. The young children who died were not just the children of their families. They were our nation's children. Our people have every right to be upset and to be angry in the face of such tragedies. At a time like this, we need to unite as a country and work together to end these deaths. We must do what it takes to make sure that such tragedies never happen again. As soon as the deaths occurred, multidisciplinary teams in government were activated to address these incidents. These teams included... After those kids now that they died, so last week alone, 22 children have died in South Africa for being, after being poisoned. Okay, so he's saying uh, foodborne illnesses. It's not a foodborne illness. When you think about foodborne illness, you think about virus, you know, bacteria like listeria and all of that. This is table force, all the carb. This is uh, chemicals. And both of these chemicals, one, all the carb is banned in South Africa. Table force is scheduled. Okay. So just when he start going on on this stuff, just be aware of that. That is the fact. Police, health officials, environmental inspectors, Department of Agriculture officials and officials from the National Consumer Commission. Cabinet has met on three occasions to receive reports from these departments on the recent incidents. This is what we now know. The National Institute of Communicable Diseases was requested to conduct scientific tests and established that the deaths of the six children in Naledi, Soweto, can be directly attributed to a highly hazardous chemical used as a pesticide known as Terboforce. We know that. So we know that. So please, this is more than six weeks later. Come on now. Terboforce can have serious health effects, even at low levels of exposure. So why table force is a schedule, table force was found in the bloodstream of children in Soweto. Why, I'm a puzzle, why a schedule poisonous pesticides? Why was it found? This is the question. This is the answer we, we want to know. Don't tell us it. We know that. We know that. You know, the Minister of Health already released those data. So we'll, what we want to know... <sighs> I'm just listening in. Okay. Terboforce <laughs> is an organophosphate chemical that is registered in our country for agricultural use. It is not allowed to be sold for general household use. So how did However, it get there? How did it get there? This chemical is being informally sold 
Why? It's a so-called street pesticide for domestic use in townships and informal settlements to control rats and rodents. Why? Samples were taken from 84 spaza shops in Naledi. Of these, three had evidence of Tevafos, this chemical. After stringent testing, so a sample were taken from the lady. Three had table force. So this one is new one. So because previously this information was not released before. So I think something, let's go back to that video and hear him again. Let's listen. Samples were taken from 84 spaza shops in Naledi. Of these, Three had evidence of Tevafos, this chemical. Yeah. After stringent testing, a chip packet found on one of the children who had died had traces of Tevafos on both the inside and the outside of the packet. Oh. So that is those chips that were taken from those kids. Remember how the environmental health people that originally said, no, those tests came negative, you know, that's, and I said, uh, I wonder how much we're getting from these people, the environmental health is, is like, are we getting any value in hiring them? Because I just didn't feel like they even understand what they're doing, to my, to my view. Um, <laughs> But anyway, I think it's when after the NICD got involved, maybe they did really thorough testing. And now we know that actually, even those samples had table force in them because you cannot really have kids uh, disappearing within half an hour, dying within five of them dying within half an hour. And then think and say, you know, you've, you've taken a couple of sample in, in, you couldn't find any any evidence of that table force. I mean, of like any test, any traces of it. It's just uh, to me that was like uh, I just felt like yeah, that's uh, how would the kids get the table force? I mean, it's scheduled medicine, it's scheduled. I mean, pesticides in South Africa registered and scheduled so that means it shouldn't be anywhere in the shops so that something is something doesn't make sense here so i'm so glad now that something new now we know uh, that even those chips that were taken out of one of the kids as pockets they were traces of this table force even the packaging the outside packaging like I said the other time that when I saw those kids trying to destroy these uh, snacks in some towns and I was so worried about whether they understand that this thing can actually be even get into your skin, into their clothing. So perhaps maybe the officials should be the one that directed the community how to do it, but they were not to be, they were nowhere to be seen. There was nobody there directing this community how they should actually deal with these issues. That's my problem. From the beginning, these people were neglected by the government, by the ANC, by this GNU government. Neglected the even the DA, nobody except nobody except for P I mean the Action SA. Action SA has been really at the forefront of making sure, looking after this community and actually being there trying to deal with the situation. But the ANC, the DA, nowhere to be seen, even the president. Now it's about a month later and in last week 22 of the kids have died. Now he start addressing the nation about this crisis. I mean, yeah, that is um, horrible. Let's listen again. As part of the investigation into the deaths that occurred in Naledi, inspectors confiscated a number of illegal pesticides from spaza shops. They found instances where food was being stored alongside pesticides and detergents. It was also found that these puzzle shops lacked proper safe food storage, hand and dishwashing facilities, 
increasing the likelihood of food contamination. Even as our investigations are ongoing, it is critical to understand that this is not a problem that is confined to spaza shops and other informal traders. It seems to be widespread. The unregulated use of restricted pesticides in communities has become a growing problem with devastating consequences. In many townships, another chemical, aldicarb, and an organophosphate known as galipirimi are commonly sold by street vendors and hawkers to control rat infestations. Aldicarb has been banned for use in South Africa since 2016. Last year, three children in Ekuruleni and three children in Soweto died after exposure to aldicarb. In responding to these tragedies, we need to understand the cause of this challenge in our communities. One of the reasons that people use pesticides for... Now, what do you think um, Ramaphosa is going to say about the cause of these um, tabifors and these pesticides? Do you think he's going to realize it's the failure of regulatory framework in South Africa, meaning his government has failed to enforce the law of South Africa? Why would people have all the cup? Why would you find a banned substances on the street vendors in South Africa? If you're in charge and a government, you uphold the rule of law, why would you find that there? I would, yeah. So, how it would it even get into South Africa when it's not even scheduled? How would even a scheduled medicine like uh, pesticides like Tebuforce being found in the street vendors where it's actually scheduled, it's registered and scheduled, and actually has to be handled by agriculturists that are trained to use it when it's needed in the agriculture and the distribution of it? It's actually controlled. How, I mean, who do you think Ramaphosa will actually admit that his government has failed? Or do you think he's going to go about and run? Let's listen anyway. Is to deal with rat infestation or prevalence. The problem of rat prevalence or infestation is due in part to poor waste management in several areas where our people live. Rubbish is not collected regularly. Streets are not cleaned as they should be, creating conditions for rats and other pests to, to thrive. Often the poorest communities are the worst affected, and often the cheapest remedies that are used are these highly hazardous substances like Tebuforce and Aldicap. Another challenge is that responsibility for environmental health that should happen in our communities is the responsibility of local government. Many municipalities do not have the capacity and resources to conduct inspections of these businesses and enforce regulations. Our response must therefore address all these factors that contribute to the problem. We also need to prevent the spread of misinformation which has been prevalent. The investigations that have taken place do not suggest any deliberate campaign to poison children in our country. There is also no misinformation oh my god i think i'm gonna really gonna hate this time starting to hate it okay <laughs> but <laughs> so he's saying that it is uh, it's not deliberate uh it's not deliberate deliberate but it could be neglect when you have a law that you're not implementing, you're not enforcing, 
I mean, there's a lot, there's a, so many ways people can look at this. Um, if you know that this problem exists but you haven't done anything, what that is, what do you call that? Okay? If you know there's a problem and you don't do anything, I mean, this government has been advised by experts many years ago. Um, we saw toxicologist uh, person that works with this uh, chemicals say, said that, you know, he's been working to advise the South African government about the danger of these pesticides and when he saw them somewhere and this government hasn't been doing anything. As always, ANC doesn't govern. They don't govern. So you, you don't know, they don't work. I mean, if such a crisis happens and you have your president doesn't come out at all, that what that what is that? How, what is that? Yeah? So, you know, horrible. Evidence that the problem is confined to spaza shops that are owned by foreign nationals only. These products are just as likely to be sold in shops that are also owned by South Africans. That is a lie. That is a lie because your own minister said about a couple of weeks ago, all of these form, all of these puzzle shops are owned by foreign nationals. He gave the statistics and they were around 98% or so. Okay. And all of these deaths, all of them happens in the foreign national shops. All of these deaths, 100%. So that is a lie. Already from there, you're lying, President. We, uh, we, they didn't have water for quite some time. We want to intervene.